Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about something very interesting, the phase transitions of the interstellar medium. So what does that mean? Well, it turns out that, yes, we now realize that stars are currently being formed from the nebulas that exist throughout the galaxy, just like it's happening in every galaxy in the universe that contains that interstellar matter. So we know that stars are being formed at a particular rate. So let's try to figure out how many stars are formed and how much matter is being transitioned from interstellar medium into stars. And then it turns out stars, as they die and as they live, they also expel, expel uh, matter back into the interstellar medium. So it's kind of like a recycling process. The best estimates that we have is that there's about 5 times 10 to 9 times the mass of the Sun, which means 5 billion times the mass of the Sun in interstellar matter throughout our galaxy. And that matter is slow to transition into stars, and stars will transition some of the material back into the interstellar medium. So we kind of have a recycling process here. Our best estimate is that about 3 to 10 times the mass of the Sun, on average, is converted from the interstellar matter back into stars. So, well, of course, we don't make a star every three every year. The process takes millions of years, typically about 10 million years. But then you can say that in a 10 million year period, we have 30 to 100, star, 100 million stars being formed in that period of time. And that's then grabbed out of the interstellar matter and transitioned into stars in the process that we just showed you in the previous videos. But stars will put out what we call solar wind particles. Stars will, when they die, turn into planetary nebulas. Stars, the very massive stars, will turn into supernovas. In some cases, they also will expel material when they nova. So there are various ways in which stars will eject material back into the interstellar medium, which then mixes with the existing interstellar medium, and that can be used again to build stars. So it turns out that roughly about one times the mass of the Sun is injected back into the interstellar medium from stars, primarily when the stars die. Also at the same time, you can see that stars turn material into stellar remnants, material that is no longer part of the interstellar medium, but that can no longer be used for stars. Typically, the vast majority of stars will turn into white dwarfs, and some of them will turn into neutron stars, or even into black holes, or they may be picked up by supermassive black holes as they get too close to those and become part of the supermassive black holes. The amount of material that turns into black holes is at this point not known and typically a fairly small amount. But about one to three times the mass of the sun on average per year is turned into white dwarfs and neutron stars never to be able to be used again to make new stars. And then there's an interaction between the, the region beyond the galaxy and the galaxy itself. It turns out that we can estimate there's about an equivalent of one times the mass of the Sun that falls into the galaxy from surrounding areas. And then we realize there's probably material going back outside of our galaxy called galaxy wind or galactic wind, but we really don't know how much of that material goes out. There's probably way more material falling into our galaxy than there's flowing out of our galaxy. And of course, that material can then also be used to form stars as it becomes part of the interstellar medium. So you can see there's a lot going on. It's almost like a complete recycling process. Stars are being formed, materials are turned back into material that can make stars, but eventually less material goes in, more material comes out, and star formation will slow down in the years and the billions of years to come. But it's interesting to see that there's a continual process of material going back and forth between the interstellar medium and stars the extragalactic material, and then eventually also into white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. And that is how it works. <laughs> Star formation in the flow chart. That's it.